Okay, today we're doing a neurological and musculoskeletal assessment. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is check the patient's chart. I want to see if there's any orders by the doctor for neurological exams, anything that anything out of the ordinary that I would want to keep in mind before I come into the room. I'm going to perform hand hygiene. I'm going to provide privacy, introduce myself to the patient. Hi, my name is Frank. I'm going to be your student nurse. Could you tell me your name and birth date, please? Uh, my name is Brian LeBeau. I was born January 14, 2000. Very good. And I identified who he was by his name tag here. And I'm going to explain the procedure to him. And I'm going to gain consent because I'm going to have to be physically touching him at some point during this. No, don't worry about the interruption. That's okay. That happens when we're doing exams and assessments on patients in the hospital. It's perfectly normal. We're going to get interrupted 10 times. So if I get interrupted, I apologize. But we're just going to keep moving forward. Not a big deal. Okay, so uh, Brian, some of these questions I'm going to ask you probably aren't going to make sense. But what I'm doing is I'm assessing for your level of consciousness in a Glasgow coma scale. Those are things I'm going to explain to the camera in a minute. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, and, and like I said, they might not be normal to what you would expect. Um, so I identified who Brian was and his birth date. So I'm going to continue already asking some of these types of questions. Um, Brian, do you know where you are right now? Yeah, I'm at Baker College Hospital. He's at Baker College Hospital. That's an excellent answer. Um, he's speaking clearly. We can see this right now. Uh, his facial expressions are appropriate. And um, he's dressed appropriately for where he's at. Hey, Brian, um, can you tell me what you had for breakfast this morning? I had some eggs. Some eggs. Okay. And do you know who won the election? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Okay. So he's answering perfectly. You know, like I said, his full assessment seems to be good at this point neurologically. So I'm testing for his Glasgow Coma Scale and his level of consciousness. He doesn't appear to be sleepy. He doesn't appear to be fatigued. Um, he's alert and orientated. So, you know, his level of consciousness would be times three. His Glasgow Coma Scale would be a 15. Um, if I felt like maybe it wasn't, I could start assessing things slightly more by saying things like, oh, Brian, I'm going to ask you three questions, or I'm going to state three random things, and I want you to repeat it to me in 15 minutes. You know, I could say something like guitar, YouTube, basketball. And he would repeat it to me now. 15 minutes later, I'd ask him if he can recite those three things. Kind of gives me an assessment like his short-term memory, because I don't know that he had eggs for breakfast. He could just have said that. I don't really know. Um, but, you know, in like a, between a short-term and long-term, you know, Trump did win the election. So, I mean, I need to assess it maybe a little closer. That's what those are for. But we seem to be fine. Um, so at this point, you know, I'm going to ask some other questions like, have you had any uh, head injuries lately? No. No. What about dizziness or lightheadedness? No. What about when you stand up, are you feeling lightheaded? Okay. Um, any pain or tenderness in your joints or muscles anywhere in your body? No. Okay. And would you say you exercise on a regular basis? Yeah. Okay. Any, any medications? No. Okay. Just basic subjective questions are basically up to uh, the nurse who's, or the student nurse who's doing an assessment. Um, so um, at this time, I have you go ahead and stand up. All right. All right. Find out if they're dizzy or lightheaded when they stood up. No. Okay. That's good. Because sometimes you randomly, you don't know, people could be like, they could be dehydrated when you came into the office. Um, so at this point, I'm going to do what's called a Romberg test. I'm checking cranial nerve number eight, and I'm gonna have him close his eyes in a second, not yet. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna protect him to make sure he doesn't fall. If he falls, I can catch him. So go ahead and close your eyes. Good. We can see, you can open them now. You can see that he barely swayed just a little bit. If I do that, I probably sway slightly just a little bit. That's a normal, that's normal, but we wanna make sure he's not toppling over. So cranial nerve, nerve number eight is intact. Um, next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that he, his coordination's good. I'm gonna have him touch his nose with his, his fingers so I know there's not a lot of room down here but go ahead okay good other one and then do it one more time try not to turn your head when you do it okay do it one more time just so that I can see that you're not turning your head very good okay good that works um next thing I want you to do is I'm gonna have you take five steps heel to toe so your heel is gonna literally touch your toe take about randomly five steps and then turn around and do the same thing back to me I want to make sure that his gait is steady and smooth which it is he's doing it fairly quickly, which means his coordination's good and he wasn't losing his balance and toppling over. Excellent. Um, so now that he's staying here, I'm going to adjust the camera just real quick because I want you to be able to see what a heel slide is. And what he's going to do is just take the heel of his foot, he's going to put it by his kneecap and he's going to slide down and he's going to do the other one. And I'm assessing everything symmetrically as we go. So go ahead and do it. Nice and smooth. Good. No problems. 
All right, so go ahead and have a seat in the chair. And I want you to go ahead and raise your hand. I want to see if, yeah, I gotta adjust it. Hold on one second, audience. Very good. I just got to make sure that I was in the right place. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is while he's sitting down, I don't remember, did I assess his shoulders? I don't think I did. So we're gonna, while he's sitting, I want to do his shoulders. I want to make sure that, because we did this video like once a minute ago, so I can't remember if I did it or not. So we'll just do it again if I did. Um, so his shoulders, I can see are symmetrical. I'll go ahead and just flare them out a little bit. No, not shrug, just flare them out. Good. Okay, good job. So I can see that bilaterally his biceps are symmetrical. Well, I'm looking for things like atrophy as one side is much larger than the other, one smaller than the other. Um, his joints, I feel that they're, they're symmetrical. One's not larger than the other. I don't see any signs of arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. I can feel that his kneecaps feel symmetrical. Go ahead, all the way down to his ankles feel symmetrical. Um, that's fine. And then I can also palpate around if I wanted. Any pain? Nope. Okay. How about here? Nope. Okay, good. Biceps? Nothing. Not quads? Quadriceps? Nothing. Nope. Okay. Calves? No, no pain. And hamstrings? Nothing? Nothing. Okay, how about your lats? Nope. nope. Okay, good. All right, so he seems to be no pain, pain-free, no tingling. We stated that already. Okay, so while you're sitting there, I'm going to do a test. It's called a Babinski test, and I'm going to run an object over his the heel of his foot. It's going to go like this, and I want to make sure that he's not like coming back out of the way. I want to make sure there's no alert, neurological uh, dysfunction there. So it, it may curl in. He might laugh. He might say that tickles. Those are all normal signs. So I don't know if the camera can see it. Can yeah, you good? You good? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so perfectly normal reaction. It's probably my favorite part of the test. <laughs> so <ticklish. laughs> Torture my son. <laughs> All right. Um, so now I'm gonna. I just want to assess to see, uh, make sure that he's got equal strength. So I'm gonna cross my fingers. The reason why you cross your fingers is so that the patient doesn't squeeze really hard and end up hurting your fingers. So go ahead and give my fingers a squeeze as hard as you can. You're not gonna hurt me. Good. I could feel that he had a firm grip, and then when he squeezed down, both sides were equal. You know, um, so now I want you to pull, and then push, and then pull. Just pull. I can feel it's equal. He's strong. Then push. Very strong. And pull again. Okay? You don't have to do a push-pull-push push on these. It's just one or the other. But when I do ears and everything, I like to make sure it's all the same. I just do push-pull-push push on everything. It makes it easier for me to remember. Um, so go ahead. and I'm going to do the same thing with the feet. He's going to push down with his feet, and he's going to lift up, and he's going to push down again. Go ahead. Down. Good. Push up, good, and then down again. Very good, Brian. All right, so I think at this time, um, I would just state my findings with the patient, let them know what it is that uh, we covered here. His assessment was great, his neurological exam was great. Like I stated, everything, everything all the way through the video was fine. Um, do you have any questions or statements at this time? Nope. I'm gonna perform hand hygiene, and then I'm gonna document everything on the computer, and that's gonna be it for today. Oh, no, that's not. <laughs> Almost got me. <laughs> Remember I said you don't have to shrug right now? You do have to. I need a range of motion on your shoulders. All right, man, I almost forgot. Good. And I need you to do a leg lift. I didn't check for that. Okay, good. And now when you shift, lift your shoulders up, I need to. Good. Okay. Cranial nerve number 11. Whew. Almost had to redo it. That was close. <laughs>